I'm Dr. Theo Sparakis from Bexley Dental, and I can give you back your smile. With the all on four dental procedure, I can put an end to broken and missing teeth and uncomfortable dentures. Book your free all on four consultation now at bexydental.com.au. I'm excited tonight to have a guest who is, um, well, he's a man on a mission, if you like. He's the founder of Osana, uh, which is a health organization that uh, is unique. His name is Kevin Cheng. He's a thoroughly trained physician and also uh, got a bit of business background as well. And his medical centers or clinics, I suppose we would call them, are launching themselves. In fact, they have launched in New South Wales. It's a different concept, a different idea. In fact, he mentioned a word that I want to start with, Kevin. And welcome to the program. You talked about slow medicine. And in fact, I kind of remember pulling back from the phone and thinking, I like that idea. What's that got to do with Osana? Uh, thanks, Jay, for having me. So slow medicine is, I suppose, a bit of an analogy to slow food. We live in a very fast world these, these days and everyone is rushed for time. Um, and slow food is uh, kind of going back to the way food was meant to be cooked. So uh, I grew up in Australia, born and bred, and grew up in the countryside, a town of 20,000 near Margaret River. And the GPs that I looked up to when I was a kid um, practiced slow medicine. So they would spend time with patients, um, look after families over successive generations, uh, take their time to really sort out the issues and be part of the community. And that's what I wanted to create a sana um, uh, around. Yeah, it stopped me. Did you did you invent the expression, or is it somewhere in the the uh, annals of medical science and history? Doesn't sound I, very scientific. Yeah, sure. So it's, it's definitely not me. I, I must have heard it around the trap yeah. uh, doing a lot of health policy work. But, you know, there are websites that describe slow medicine and uh, a, a big shift uh, around the world when you look at health systems is a move from a lot of activity, just seeing patients uh, every hour, lots of consultations, very kind of transactional uh, episodes of healthcare towards um, building relationships and, and looking after people over over time. And so uh, there's been a gradual movement towards better outcomes and an indexation towards spending time um, and sorting out issues, particularly as our population ages. So this notion of slow medicine. So what I would call it is relational medicine. Correct. Um, not the five-minute medicine mm. that we might see in bulk billing centres. Um, okay, yeah. time's up. Next. <laughs> That's right. One problem per consult and different GP every time. So yes. We're, we're trying to build the relationship. And when you build the relationship, we think that we can actually access what's missing, which is patients and families taking charge of their own health care. I think, you know, gone are the days, I've been a GP for 20 years, gone are the days when uh, we've been guilty, I think, as, as doctors of uh, perhaps telling uh, patients what to do. Nowadays, it's very much patients are on Google, they, they look things up, and we are very much just coaches and partners with patients as they journey through the health system. And they can walk, and as they do, in fact, I do this, you know, I look for something, I walk into the doctor's surgery, I know what I've got and I know what I should be getting. And then every now and then, if he's a good quack, I'll actually listen to what he has to say and I walk out feeling better and getting better. That's right. So for those that are motivated, you know, they're, they're valuing their health, they're going to the gym, eating well, exercising, uh, we often can, can get good health outcomes. Um, I suppose when we look at the statistics, that doesn't always happen for uh, all Australians. You know, half the time, uh, we, we see a huge opportunity in actually providing better care. So mm. uh, whilst my colleagues as GPs uh, try their best, Medicare doesn't always pay us uh, as much money, uh, certainly over time, to, to keep up with the cost of running a practice. And so we just spend less and less time, and that means that we uh, sometimes actually compromise on the quality of care. And on the patient side, you know, until we spend time with patients and build that relationship, mm. we can't always get the, the right mindsets and the behaviours to, to look after their own health. Let me ask you a philosophical question, then a practical question. Um, the word... Osama, what, where does that come from? So Osana with an N, it's a Spanish word. Did I say actually. Osana? Yeah. That's Osana, right. sorry. Uh, Osana is a Spanish word that means health and well-being. Mm. And we, we thought that was a nice 
uh, name for a, a very different approach to, to health care. Okay, the practical question is then if the government's not paying the GPs enough to run the practice properly, uh, how much – I notice in, in your website, which is a very good website, by the way, O-S-A-N-A um, – you, you you join you pay a membership fee to be part of your practice. If I'm a patient of yours, and one of your clinics is not far from where I live, I might say, "Hey, I want to you know, I want to join up. You sign me up. What is that, what do I get for the hundred and fifty dollars to join?" Sure. So the first thing is is it's a membership. So we think of it's, uh, it's like an association. Correct. And the reason for that is uh, we want to do regular checkups. So much like a car, we, we don't want to wait until the body breaks down like a breakdown service. So uh, we want to see people when they're well, but also uh, when they're sick. So for $150, we think it's a, a small enough fee to cover everything and there's no uh, out of pocket uh, every time you come to the clinic. And what you get is uh, bulk build uh, medical services, so seeing a GP, but we have an army of other health uh, clinicians as well, so psychologists. So let's let's therapy. let's make it say one clinic. Um, so what do I expect at the clinic at say Cremorne? Sure. So specifically at Cremorne, we've got uh, various teams that look after patients. So GPs, we've got a, a nurse, we've got an exercise physio, a dietitian, a psychologist, and a physio. So you, uh, one stop shop, you can uh, for one hundred fifty dollars see all of those. Uh, services uh, based on a health plan and that's something that we think is really important when patients enroll into this membership we essentially do an audit of their health look back to even when they were a kid and understand all the health risks we look at all the evidence and the clinical guidelines all the GPs are uh, at the top of their game we come up with a health plan and we come up with a health plan that is forward-looking so the next sort of final two years we think about all the different interventions that will keep that person healthy and, and happy. Uh, and part of the membership, we also do a lot of health uh, education. So the clinic is set up very differently. We have uh, an exercise room where we uh, do exercise classes. Uh, we do a lot of group work, health education talks every week. And the idea is to really engage with patients so that um, health is at the uh, forefront of their mind. And health isn't something that is um, unpleasant you know people don't want to go to hospital don't want to go see their gp no. but we want to make it at least more of a pleasant experience so um people get the best health outcome possible and and we also provide some other services like a car to pick people up we do a lot of home visits we even do videos and we're the first medical center in australia to provide free videos as part of our service as well uh, so you can do a video consult if if uh, if you're busy and we know the patient they're one of our members uh, we can we can chat over the phone if we don't need to examine the patient. That's so uh, we've had a bit of a chat, you and I, before, obviously, uh, which I like to do. Uh, what You're not just a doctor, a trained doctor. You, you went out and did some training in, in business. So, so, I mean, one of the problems is people with good ideas often, often don't know how to... Uh, to make them work. You know, you get the, these techo guys that know how to fix machines, but they don't know how to work with people. So what what was the light that went on in your head when you said, I know, this is what we're going to do and I'm going to train to do it? Sure. Um, I spent a better part of 10 years uh, outside of healthcare. So I, um, through a very windy career path, I went back to uni, did business, um, worked around the world helping uh, companies improve, so being a doctor to companies, if you like, okay. um, looking at strategy and operations. And then I got pulled back into healthcare when Australian government and also governments overseas uh, needed uh, help because we were running out of uh, funding. Uh, so healthcare was becoming much, much uh, more expensive over time. And, and I did a lot of health policy work, looking at best practices around the world. So when I looked at, uh, came back home to Australia, um, there was a real opportunity, I thought, to apply some of that thinking and evidence from uh, my travels around the world uh, to see if we can reinvent uh, healthcare here, move it from very reactive care much more towards pr being proactive, a, a big focus on prevention, and, and trying to move the funding model as well from just paying for a lot of activity to paying for what patients actually need that would uh, deliver a good health outcome. So for me, that was really a, um, an area that I felt passionate about and something that at this point in my life I wanted to focus on um, as being my sort of niche area. 
Well, that sounds like a great idea to me, and I know, I know our listeners will be uh, attuned, will have their ear attuned, as I often say, uh, because one of the things you say is our mission is to keep you happy, healthy, and if possible, out of hospital. That's exactly where we don't want to be. So uh, I didn't ask you to tell me what it is. So how do we get more information? If, if Obviously, the website is OSANA, uh, but is there a number that we could use, or would you rather I do that later? Uh, sure. There's the website, which is asana.care. Uh, we have a one three number, which is one three well one three nine three five five, or you can send us an email at info at osana dot care. Okay, hey, it's been good to talk to you. Thank you very much, and and uh, I'm quite excited for you and your team that uh, you succeed and help lots and lots of people. Thanks for joining us tonight, Kevin. Thank you so much, Jay, for your support.